Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioners Meeting. November 20th meeting of the Alamance County Commissioners. And before we begin, I'd like Ms. Gagley, if she would, to lead us in invocation and pledge of allegiance. I'd be delighted to. If you care to, please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we just lift up our hearts to you this evening with um, Thanksgiving for this week, Lord, and the uh, holiday that we're about to celebrate. I just pray that as we make decisions tonight as a government body, that you would be pleased with our words and our thoughts, that um, you would help us to be wise and to make decisions that are pleasing to you and help to do your work in this community. And we pray for all the first responders and those who are serving in our armed forces that you would bless those folks and um, that, that they would um, be safe and that they would be able to return to their families soon. In, G in our Father's name we pray, amen. 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 Join me in the pleasure of the I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I guess we had no one sign up for public comments tonight, so we'll move on to uh, approval of the agenda for the evening. So moved. Thank you, Bill. Second. Second. Thank you, Amy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Consent agenda. Is there anything there that anyone would like to pull out, and discuss, talk about? I move approval of the consent agenda. All right. Thank you, Bob. Second. Thank you, Amy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, next on our list tonight is recognition of the 2017 Fall County Government Academy graduates. So I'm going to come down and towards. Oh, before we uh, present, <coughs> Mr. Chairman, we do have a presentation. <laughs> oh, okay. We're going to do that before we start. Okay. <coughs> <laughs> they got to sit in our seats too, Tim. Right, right.
story. That was very good. Uh, all right. We'll come down and we'll get everybody up here. A lot goes on in county government, huh? <laughs> you don't realize it until you get out and move around. Tori's made us up some uh, things for each individual. And <coughs> Juanetta, no way. Actually, I, I'd like to mention she is also over the Burlington Ground MPO, which is downtown Burlington, and which I, uh, she's been there how long? Six months? Oh, nine months. Nine. <laughs> so she's been there a while, but I'm glad you could come Thank and be so part of this. Tori's got your appeal. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Uh, Victoria McCain. So what was the most fun to be part of the academy? The land. The land. <laughs> <laughs> you spent more time there. It was like anywhere else. A lot goes on down there, right? That's the truth. A lot goes on. Here's your certificate, Victoria, and congratulations. And thank you for participating. Thank you. Gary. Gary. to the area, as Tori's telling me. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> About eight months or so in the county. Good. You think we're doing okay running the county? <laughs> it's great. Okay. <laughs> there we go. A lot of information. <laughs> great. Here's your certificate. Thank you for participating. And there's your pen. Thank you. Thank you. Anthony Pierce. Yes, sir. Yes. There you go. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you for participating. Thank you for participating. What they learn. All right. Thank you. Let's give my hand. I would like to say thank you to Tori for all her hard work uh, on this program. I'm sure the participants would agree yes. that uh, yes. she did an outstanding job uh, helping make it happen. Thank you. Yes, she uh, thank definitely you. does a great job coordinating that. All right. Next on our agenda tonight is Register D position funding request from uh, Mr. Hugh Webster. So, Mr. Webster, I'll just invite you to come up and speak. Come up. Somebody invite me to just sit down and speak. Well, that'd be all right, too, sir. <laughs> this is going to be short and simple. All right. What I want, what I need is restoration of full-time personnel, and I think y'all have a copy of this little memo. And uh, I had a, a super excellent young lady to leave. To, she, she wants to be in the medical field somewhere. Anyway, back in 2011 when Lynn Blythe retired, I agreed with not replacing her. Uh, in fact, it was my idea knowing the county's budget was tight. I figured I'd get by. Well, I need to hire full time to replace Jessica. And go back to within a half a position of what I was when I. Uh, what it was when I came on board. Uh -huh. And uh, we have identified a, a prospective employee with a solid work background. Her long time employer appears to be going out of business, which is always bad news for me, Alamance County. Uh, they may or may not survive, I don't know. And uh, this lady, Needs a full-time job making at least thirty thousand dollars a year, and of course, it, we're moving from a half-time to a full-time, and that's going to take some extra money, but not much. And uh, so, I request that y'all give diligent consideration to approving this request. Now, what's the what's the position? What's the title of the position? Deputy Register of Deeds. Okay. What we do in that building, Bill, it's 
sorry, Commission of Action, is everybody is cross-trained. Yeah. And we do this so that when we have, you know, if we have, if we get hit with, with flu yeah. or something, then we can still operate because we, we have to <coughs> do, the, do the work. We have, yeah. to, we have to, and I, I would invite y'all anytime you will to come over and look around. We have, uh, it's pretty, pretty neat. Uh, I'll tell y'all later about the things that we've done. Okay. And, uh, if you got any questions, I'd be glad to. I have a question. Yeah. There seems like there's a, a lot of uh, building activity and growth in this community, and so I imagine that's impacting the register of deeds. Of course, mm -hmm. it's probably impacting all of our county departments, but uh, joyfully. <laughs> that's right. So I mean, it's really so it's part of this request because of that increased activity you need need that full time versus part time to keep up. Yeah, and but now if you if you come into our office in that building, you might you might think that we're not doing it. Most of the the deed deed of trust come in through the internet now. Internet yeah. now, yeah. And uh, but it still has to be it has to be handled, has to be dealt with. Anyhow, yeah, sure. sure no. and, uh, yeah. Our job is to keep up with all, keep up with the real estate and the deaths and the births and the marriages, and the and the DD two for the discharges, the military discharges. Uh, I don't know what other registers of these are doing, but I don't allow that DD two fourteen to be scanned into our service. And the reason is very simple. That discharge has a lot of very private, very personal information on it. And by law, it's not it's not public until it's been in our office for, for 80 years. It used to be 50 That's right. And uh, anyway, we, we've had pretty good response to it. I think of that program. Participated in the Veteran Day Parade, which is sad. Mm -hmm. Anyway, any other questions? M Mr. Webster, is there a reason that we couldn't wait to um, add the other half of that position? Why we couldn't wait until the next budget cycle? Why does it need to be done now instead of okay. next year? I found a person. And, uh, and she needs, I think that her employer is probably going out of business. And uh, I've, had, I've had plenty of trouble, problems, filling the slots, mm -hmm. as, as does anybody that's in business. Uh, and how long had Jessica been working for you, the one that's leaving? You said she is a part the part time employee. How long well, she, she was a full time. Mm -hmm. She uh, she was a full time. The uh, Mars Blahuta was a half time. Mm -hmm. now, her husband Joe died, <coughs> and I think I think she's still struggling. But she 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 wanted to come full time because the death of her husband really put her in a bind. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jessica's been there about a year and a half. Okay. And what happened was Jessica wanted to go back to school, and she, she wanted to go to, to halftime, which it suited us fine. And we put Marge on full time mm -hmm. and Jessica on halftime. But now Jessica's gone. Today was her last day. And, uh, and I need to... I need to replace. I need to replace Jessica, and I need it 
things have changed quite a bit. We, we, we have We have two different payroll periods. Why, I don't know why in the hell anybody ever thought that was a good idea. But we have one that's mid-month and one that's end of the month. And, uh, but it, it, and it's, it creates a problem for us having half-time and full-time. And uh, an answer. I guess we could do, but I don't want to. And 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 I and I got a, I got a person identified that I think is really good. She's got a good work history, and uh, she comes from the Anderson community, which is. Uh, I remember what, what it worked for me, Mr. CPA. He was saying, "You, we got to find some help." I said, "Yeah, I know it. Why don't you find some?" He said, "Well, we need to, we need to find some in the Anderson community. <laughs> they, they, they know, they know what work is over there." Okay. Well, on that point, can I ask another question? Yeah. If you're done, Amy. Um, Go ahead. So, um, the, the, when you hire staff, do you do that through our county's HR department, or is that something mm -hmm. because you're elected independently that you do on your own? Because one reason I'm concerned is just to make sure that we're in compliance with all the regulations associated with hiring, all the discrimination issues and all of that. Um, As I know. I guess the question is, is it posted is on it, our Yeah, is it posted and everybody has an opportunity to apply and... Um, What's so, the so I, I see Brian's well, look, thing. I, I am not, I don't have time to go through 300 applications half of whom can't spell the name of the high school they graduated from. Right. So, is that, and, and, and I am an elected official. Yes, but I guess well, that's the question, that's, that's, yeah, it's yeah, a that's question. question. Yeah. And um, so then I was also, but the, these are county employees and the county's paying for it. Uh, it's out of well, our county budget. Right. I'm here because y'all y'all the ones that got the money. <laughs> Uh, and so I was going to ask if uh, our county manager our county has attorney a attorney, maybe. Can or, answer, yeah. Well, uh, well, this is a separate question. Does the county manager have a recommendation for approving this position or not? Uh, so. I, we've looked at uh, the rest of these numbers. They they are seeing an increase in workload. Uh, their revenues are up. Uh, we're we told the uh, board that it would take an additional eighteen thousand dollars to uh, get. Mr. Webster's position from half time to full time for the rest of the year. Yes. So I would recommend that the board uh, proceed with uh, funding okay. the position, and then Mr. Webster can uh, work with us to determine does it need to be posted or not. Uh, okay. we'll, we can figure that out. Yeah. But I would recommend the board. Yeah, we do want to follow guidelines, yeah. whatever they are. Yes. To keep well, us out of trouble, Mr. Yeah, Webster. One of the issues <laughs> is you, you generate a lot of your own revenue. You generate all my own revenue. Yeah, and so you know, I think you got to look at it a little yeah. bit differently and. Uh, He's been a good steward of uh, that operation over there, as far as I'm concerned. I would like to ask you this. <laughs> April, when you start doing fiscal year stuff for upcoming year. Budget stuff. 18, 19. Yes. How, how, how are you looking on budget requests or, or personnel at that point? Well, I will tell you that a few years ago, I don't remember how long ago, I uh, insisted that we get a a pay study, working pay study, and I know what it come. Up, I know what the answer was. My people are underpaid compared to other registered deed staff and compared to other county employees. Now, we got, I think, a two percent raise back then, but money. Many of my people had had been years with no increase at all, no, nothing. And um, I must be a wonderful person to work with because I don't know why they work for me. <laughs> I mean, it's certainly not for the pay. But uh, Alamance County has good benefits. And 
and this is one of the things that it causes us problems. Uh, all of these days off and time off in this lottery for to get um, y'all know what I'm talking about. Now, every time you give somebody a lottery for a day off, I still got to get the work done, and I only have ten people. Talking about, you, you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh. <laughs> well, I, I'll try to tell you briefly. <laughs> it's it's uh, two hours off for this, a two uh, hour day for that, or whatever. In addition to the regular vacation, uh, so. vacation and holiday and sick pay. Well, these would be things that all county departments are probably having to experience. Right. I imagine, right? <coughs> well. I'm sure that all county departments are expensive, but this mm -hmm. county department has got to get that work done. You cannot wait. Mm -hmm. North Carolina has it's what, what they call a race estate. Whoever gets out first with the deed is the one that owns the property. And if you screw up and don't get that deed yeah, processed, yeah. then it's correct order that gives me an opportunity to lose everything I worked for all of my life that ain't that ain't that's not funny I'm not laughing <laughs> no I didn't say you were I just wanted to <laughs> let you know that uh, but anyway I need I need to go I need to Go to a full time person. Then I'll motion we support a full time. So moved. Second. All right. I just want to say that I remember when we were talking about hiring a public information officer last January that there was reservations expressed on the board about hiring somebody in the middle of the budget cycle and that we should um, possibly wait until the budget was being worked on to add that position. But if the county manager thinks that this is, you know, a timely request and that we can afford it and so forth, then um, I'm not going to object and to that. And that will be in next year's budget, that full-time yeah, person. Probably. So that will just roll over. Okay, we have a motion and a second. I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sound like you got 100% support, you, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, next up, Alamance Burlington School System Lottery Fund Request by Dr. Thorpe. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. Hope everybody's excited for a happy holiday coming up soon. Uh, Why not? Hey. <laughs> good time. As long as I'm <laughs> upright, I'm it's a good day. There's so much to be thankful for. <laughs> you are exactly. You're correct there. That's, uh, we need to count our blessings more often. That's right. Uh, I'm here today. I need to return $7,736.10 to the lottery funds for projects that we've completed. And you know, we've had this discussion before. We we're about you know, 12 to 18 percent over when we ask for money to make sure we have enough to complete a project with. <coughs> and here to request $187,200 uh, to fix some ADA issues, some bathroom issues, and some other issues that we can do while kids are in school. Can you tell me what you said, bathroom issues? Tell me some more about that. Bathroom please. styles. Uh, our petitions in our bathrooms are extremely old. And if you're in the construction world, they change this hardware just <laughs> randomly ever so often. And we've patched and we've pieced and we've done mm -hmm. what we can do. We, your doors now are impossible to find a replacement door, those type of things. So we're going to have to go in and take our old and use it to complete some projects with and replace some of the old with new. So we can, you know, give students privacy in bathrooms and those type of things. Which bathrooms or which school are we talking about? Do you know? We're actually focusing on all the high schools. We had uh, one or two that really were bringing up uh, as issues. And as we got to looking, it's the issue is much broader than what so we that thought. will cover the repairs and all. Of we feel like we feel really good with that number right now that we can. Like I said, we're going to, have to take some old and piece it together to make some work and then we'll put, uh, purchase new for those. So one of my constituents was uh, <laughs> thinking that uh, we don't do enough for the facilities and um, I mean this isn't 
we, a lot of money, really. You can't do very much with $187,000. You look at all the needs. Of, how many schools do we have? Uh, 30, uh, 35. 35. We take care of 40 buildings. And uh, so I guess the issue is, do, are you requesting enough? Probably not, but I'm requesting what we can get done. So that, that uh, was my answer to the person who asked me, because you can only do so much at a time. Correct. And that we, we, we'd rather take four or five projects, get those done, then move into four or five, then have 15 projects started and never have the manpower to finish the projects as we need to. Plus, so, I guess, working during the school year is always right. the It's issue. difficult. Yeah. So we have to sort of pick and, yeah. you know, like during the summer, we'll go in and start, we've got big plans to do a lot of carpet again this summer. But we can go in, we can rip carpet out, rooms can sit bare for a week if they need to, tile folks can come back. We've got plenty of time. Mm. But while kids are in the building, we're kind of limited sometimes in where we can work at in the building and to which projects we can take on because of the noise and the amount of dust and right. you know, those type of things we're going to stir up. Uh, but there is a lot more, a lot of refunds available yeah, than what you're requesting. Oh, yes. 2.172 left after this. And so I'm on, this summer we're going to take care of another right, big good. portion of that, I'm afraid. All right. I'll make the motion we support it. I nice second it. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bob. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, hearing none. Thank Aye. you, sir. Thank you. Can we get a report on the lottery balance and what we're expecting years go by or sure come can. to us? All right. Moving right along. Next up is a bid report on the uh, Canodal Building property. And Mr. Albright, you're in charge of that, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Received our bids today at the appointed time in the manager's office. We had one bid. It was Alamance Academy uh, for $10,000. And as I read through the rest of the bid proposal, I put on the uh, counter for you the uh, letter that cover letter went with it where Alamance Academy explains what they're going to do with the property. And uh, they have had their engineers go in, and they also submitted an estimate of what it's going to cost to uh, repair the building. That's $563,300. This uh, process started back in May of this year with the Alamance Academy contacted me about the property. And uh, we got the formal proposal in August. And I came before this board in uh, October with the uh, resolution to sell. And as part of that resolution, you can make a decision tonight to accept the bid, reject the bid, re-advertise it, or you can put off your decision so such so time as you're satisfied that this is the way to go. <clears throat> I'll be happy to try and answer any questions. Did that 500 include a roof repair? Well, I believe it included $270,000 if you look at page one of the proposal. Did you get one it's of about the, Somebody make sure. It's, it's right there. Oh, this guy, is this it? Yes, sir. It's got an outline. Okay. It's okay. on page three. Yeah. It, uh, the fungal rot, water damage around one or more roof areas. They have listed two hundred seventy thousand dollars for that. I don't know if that is a roof repair. Our roof repair. I asked the manager about it uh, this afternoon, and when we were gifted the building, uh, it was going to cost about four hundred forty thousand dollars to completely replace the roof. What's and the square footage of that building? Thirty, right at thirty thousand square feet, okay. and it sits on about two point. One four acres. To what? Two point one four acres of land, I believe. How's it zoned? I think I'm it's sure a business a institutional. institutional. Probably institutional. You got for the hospital, land medical land. office, yeah. the school across the street, and the church beside it. Yeah. I didn't know you were going to put those up, but I went by there today on my way to Greensboro and detoured over because I live near there, and I took three pictures the best I could as far as the uh, perimeter of the building. I couldn't get the fourth side because of uh, I was in a hurry plus there's a traffic concern. But I'm not going to lie to you. I, I was expecting a whole lot worse condition when I drove over there because I hadn't seen the building in a long time. 
And I, it, it doesn't look bad on the outside. Yeah. And I would like to go in the building, and I'm sorry I haven't before we go I in the Buddy had some pictures of the inside. Of I won't go in it. We, we, had, a, we had a group uh, from our Stepping Up initiative looking at that building as a possible building to do uh, our diversion center. Uh, it's way, way more square footage than what we had needed, but um, you know, my view of the building needed a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Pretty, but but if I could say, um, when we were gifted that building, um, graciously gifted the building, I should say, um, the, the idea was is that uh, the people who were donating the business or the building thought it would be for us to be able to provide services for the public good. And, and I don't think that, um, or my attitude anyway is about selling the building, isn't to sell it to get a lot of money for it or, or to renovate it, but uh, I'm happy that it is going to be used by uh, the Alamance Academy who's doing wonderful work. It's a mental health kind of work that they do. Plus they would be able to um, use it for other nonprofit work too. So it, it, the, the purpose for which the building was gifted to us would be fulfilled, I think, uh, with this transaction. And, uh, and just given the fact that it needs so much um, capital investment to make it usable for anybody, even if we were going to use it for our purposes, uh, I know Craig had some estimates that we were talking a whole lot more money than, than this uh, to, to if it were going to be used for county purposes. Because when you take an existing building and transform it, you know, there's usually they're, they're building repairs and all, but there's also money that needs to be spent to configure it uh, to efficiently um, use it for the functions that an organization is going to use it for. To me, the building is more of a liability to us right now, so I'm just happy that it can be used for a good purpose that the community is going to benefit from. I'd be inclined to, uh, to accept the offer, but I'm willing to hear other points of view. Well, and one thing Melissa has agreed is she's going to let us use some parking space for our people across the road and also going to dedicate a third of the property to nonprofits and community programming use. So we do a lot of things for our community, and I, I know you will take the liability of the roof and the fixing up, but the thing is, I don't know that we are, have a use for it or we'd be, even be justified in spending the money that's going to be needed on it. Was I, it in writing that we do what you're saying? Uh, was that just a verbal exchange or uh, was, it a, was there a resolution on that? Uh, I don't know of, a, of a, any resolution or anything in writing. There was a verbal exchange that I had with one of the owners. Um, but um, Plus they got to take it off the property tax rate. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure that they may have had <laughs> some, sure that was some, yeah, some that motiva was financial motivation to go yeah. ahead and but, but the building was advertised. I mean, other people in the community had an opportunity to right. bid on it. And in, in fact, uh, the people from Chapel Hill did come up with their engineers and their uh, folks to look at it. I'd like to wait at least 30 more days before we make a decision. And I'll make that motion we wait 30 days before a decision is made on accepting a bid. I'll second that, but I would like to ask a question. I called Susan today, and I've been busy. I know you have been, but it, you know that's across the street from Hillcrest. It's uh, half a block away from uh, Bond Road uh, School Administration Building, and so forth. Uh, I don't think we're thinking outside the box with this. Down at Ashboro, years ago, they had a motel across the street from the high school. And that was back when 220, before they expanded, and everybody had to go through Asheboro to travel. And so they had a nice motel, well built, across the street from high school. Well, when traffic was detoured or rerouted due to new 220, the four-laner, they bought the motel and converted it into classrooms and other space, and it's well done well utilized and I would like to know if that if uh, if and I asked a question coming up to Todd I think Todd's gone 
But if, if the school system is involved, interested in that building, could lottery funds be used to refurbish the building? And uh, he said he thought so. So, yeah, I think there's a whole lot more. And I think we have obligation to uh, not give it away and, uh, and and make the most practical use of, of the facility and, and or the, the land. So $10,000 to me is not even, it's, forgive me, I'll just be honest about it, it's, it's laughable. And if that seems disrespectful, I'm sorry. But I, I just, I'll certainly never support $10,000. But may, I, may I suggest that if Ms. Peterson will allow me to make copies of her environmental and engineering report, it's a 57-page report that covers everything. The foundation, the plumbing, uh, the reason I didn't do it is because it says Property Development Academy Confidential, so mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't have a chance to catch up with her today to see if I could make copies of this, but extremely detailed report, property inspection report that went into, I think, this estimate of... When was the building vacated? Uh, it was about three years ago. Yeah. We received three years it. ago, we had patients in there, we had doctors in there, and well, now all of a sudden... I'm not sure. Few, just a few. That's, it wasn't like in the day... Well, they were in there. The, the, they were in there. That's right. Well, well, I would say that uh, we do have a precedent of giving buildings away, mm -hmm. buildings that were owned by the county mm -hmm. that oh, needed to be fixed up, but we didn't want to take on that liability, mm -hmm. and so the, the... And we own one that we tore down over here. But, it, but the parties that were uh, occupying the building, providing nonprofit services, um, agreed to yeah. take on that those uh, capital improvements <coughs> in exchange for us donating them the building. So, okay. I mean, this is kind of the same thing, except and it hasn't been already occupied. But right. Well, we have a motion and a second by Tim. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm very, very familiar with this area. I drive past it to get to Graham. I'm up and down Graham Hopedale Road all the time, and um, I respectfully think that y'all are kind of um, overestimating what that property is worth. It's right down from the General Electric plant, mm -hmm. and Western Western Electric. yeah, sorry, the Western Electric mm -hmm. plant, and um, like a block, maybe half a block away from what used to be a pharmacy. Then it was a taco thing. And now I think that's vacant too. I don't know who owns that. It's got graffiti spray painted all over this nearby building. That's between the Cronota Clinic building and the Western Electric plant. And then just down the road from that, on the other side of Church Street, is that horrible thrifty tire place with all those tires <laughs> all over that um, people are always scratching their heads trying to figure out what to do about that place. Well, I mean, don't forget about Johnny's Steakhouse in the middle of all that. Yes, <laughs> there is. There's Johnny's a survived. dear Western Steakhouse who's been there, and, um, you know, I frequent that pretty often, too. Also, the Lidl parking lot, whatever is going to happen with that giant thing, we just don't know. So, I, you know, I'm not sure that um, thinking that the property is worth a fortune is really, um, I'll say, realistic. Uh, that's well, it's not worth too more strong than ten thousand dollars. Well, you know, but you think <clears throat> depends on what you have they're to taking if they're taking <laughs> a five hundred thousand dollar liability off of our hands, then that has value to it as well. I don't think we okay, I'm fine. I know how I'm gonna vote. Okay. Um and I do think that we have a pretty detailed proposal about what they want to do with it. Um the Alamance Academy has a as I understand a proven track record. Our director of social services vouches for them and the value of their work and how they um, dovetail with what the Department of Social Services does. And it puts them right in that same area. I think that this is a common sense use of the property for people who seem very motivated to I do agree, something good with 10, it. 10,000 is a giveaway. Well, well I guess I just look at it in the context yeah. of the whole neighborhood. With um, I don't know how much the Lidl people paid for that giant parking lot across from um, the Family Justice Center. Cost, it got <laughs> but it's just sitting lot. there. Well, you forgot to mention across the street you've got a four-story <clears throat> building that was refurbished in the Social Services Health Department, right. and Mental Health, and sure, uh, the county it, it's hardly a dog of a neighborhood. Well, I didn't mean to. Well, I mean, I guess I did kind of say that. I would but, say so. But, and I don't mean that to be insulting to anybody, but you look at it. I drive past it all the time. You have I live in the neighborhood. People. Well, I know other people who do as well. Mm -hmm. I okay. mean. <laughs> uh, all right, Bill, will you, will you restate your motion Yeah, I'll make the motion that we wait 30 days before we decide on accepting that bid. That's my motion. And Tim second that. 
and I'm going to call for a vote. All in favor of doing that, voice aye. 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 I'll wait 30 days. There's no rush as far okay. as I know. It's Everybody been sitting there okay. for three I'm voting years. no, but Bob is voting no on that. Uh, I would prefer that we move on it too, but we'll. we'll yeah, 30 days. We'll is give fair. you 30 Can days. Can we approach the school system and see if they would be interested in doing anything with that. that building <laughs> and if lottery funds could be mm -hmm. used to refurbish it and so forth and it could be used for office space? Uh, you know, Hillcrest might have programs they could put in there. It's all kind of things that you could look at and I think serve the public good and not necessarily force us into doing what you, Bob's saying that they wanted us to do with it. Well, I mean, I've never heard they wanted us to do anything. If we close the bids today at 12, yeah. you would have to reject the bid and then open it up to rebids if you're going to let the school system uh, vote on it. But I would suggest that they, I don't know if they're interested in it or not, they should have bid on it. I don't think they're interested in I don't my opinion. I, I, don't, don't think I don't know that anybody is or they would have bid on it. So. I'm, well, I'm voting with Bob on that part because uh, we're, we're delaying. I think we're holding up. Mr. Chairman, may I, uh, may I make copies of this and distribute to the board then? Yes, uh, I think tomorrow. that would be beneficial to all so we would have this estimate and can look at it. Can all you right. arrange uh, time for us to go over and look at it? Go inside. Sure. And I would like to see us approach the school system under the premise that lottery funds might be able to be used to refurbish the building. You know, if they if you, can use it, be yeah. If you hadn't asked them, you don't know. That's right. And the mere fact they, they didn't put they in not a, even thought about it. Yeah, the mere fact they didn't put in a bid doesn't mean they might not. You know, they might not be thinking of it in that tune, in that line. And uh, why not? Let's ask. They may not be interested. They may not. Ask well, them. we got 30 days to yeah. look at That's it. Right. And Melissa, if you would like to speak, you're welcome to speak. Um, um I kind of wanted to say I, I understand you, Mr. Sutton, and thank you guys for the time. But the Alamance Academy brings more than just a business. We're part of this community. We also bring jobs here. We were with DSS and people, um, people that are on work first that we've put, been able to put to work. So it's more than just like paying $10,000. We're going to be putting a lot into fixing the building. And also what we bring as far as jobs and working with the community to support uh, some of our, our most vulnerable populations here in our, you know, and so. Um, I would like for you guys to consider that too and looking at what, what as an agency what we're willing to put in it and also what we're willing to give back to the community. Currently we're working with the school system in, um, now um, with the PETS grant to do some work type skill building for 14 to 21. So we work with the school system as well and also with DSS. And so it wouldn't just be a building that we're paying $10,000. It has more value to our community than, than that mm -hmm. because we value our community and the people that we work with and what we bring. So I'd just like you to consider that. With all due respect, I appreciate that, and, and, and I'm, I'm glad you do what you do, okay? But I'm not going to fib to you. When I saw the $10,000, I thought, I know I need glasses. Wait a second. And I thought, is that 100000 and, and again, ten thousand dollars to me, I was floored to be quite honest about it. Well, when you kind of look at some of the security um, and safety things that we've had a full inspection, that we invested a lot of money doing this full inspection of the building. So when you look at some of the hazards, like mm -hmm. even safety hazards that are marked in this in the building and things and repairs, and then once you get into that building, you don't mm -hmm. know what else you may run into, and also with what we're going to bring to the community, mm -hmm. like you know, putting people to work. We employ mm -hmm. over 61 that. people now. Right. We could, we could, you know, then also work with other nonprofits. So we have some of those same things contained in one spot. That could also help the county. That's a that's that's a value. There's a place of value in that. So we'd like for you guys to consider that. Too. Thank you, Melissa. And we Thank will. Right. I guess our next thing for us is to re put it out that it's up for bid again, uh, Clyde. I'm gonna well, defer. Closed. Okay. Well, so the motion was to delay the decision 30 for 30 days, days not to reject the bid. Okay. So can we do that? Not to, to reject the bid. Okay. So that's, that's right. your... Okay. Yeah. So and we'll bring this back up. Okay. That's why I voted for the motion, because I understood that... So that means that, that um, we may not move tonight, but we have 30 days I to... I saw my breath for 30 more days. <laughs> that's fine. That's well, fine. if that's the case, we can't approach the schools. Is that correct? Well, I don't. I, I think if I understand right, the board could in 30 days decide to, to reject, reject the bid right. or whatever you want to do. So if you 
uh, want us to contact the school system, see if they have any interest in the property, we can certainly do that. And in the next 30 days, we can arrange for an opportunity for any of the commissioners that are interested to go take a tour of the interior of the building. We can do that too. But what I'm hearing is, we'll uh, 30 days from now, we will the meeting in 30 days, you'll revisit days. the bid that we have received, which is one bid uh, from Alamance Academy, and make a decision. And we'll bid. give you the detailed information, which also includes ADA compliance, because that exactly. everything has to be. It was quite a bit that. of that in here in well, your first, estimate. The first part of the building was built. 45, 46, and, and that's before. possibly one of the reasons they were also glad to give it away because <laughs> those things cost. All right, very good. All right, thank you, Clyde. Thank you, Melissa. We thank will you. look at that. We'll investigate a little further and come back to you in 30 days. Time for Christmas. <laughs> that's all right. Sure. Yep, you're next, I think. The, um, Resolution you have before you to adopt the uh, well, for the state change the law, <clears throat> and they amended the statute to allow the county to ratify the geodetic survey. <clears throat> and if Alamance and Guilford ratify the geodetic survey, which was done in 2007, <clears throat> then that will become the county line. Um, and as I said before, I think in 2013, before you make any changes to a line, you need to know where the line is. Well, they've already done the work. Um, this bill, which you have before you, uh, allows us, a as a board, to agree with Guilford County that to uh, have the geodetic survey finalize and, uh, the, the survey and create a map which will be recorded in our Register Deeds Office and, and in the um, Gilbert County Register Deeds Office and also with the Secretary of State. Um, as I understand it from, the, from speaking with the Gilbert County Attorney, he would propose that we would pre prepare a bill while the legislature is still in session uh, that could cover the other things that we had talked about in our previous discussions, such as ambulance and fire service and school, school issues. Um, but the county can't tax property that's not in the county. So, and the, I'm not anticipating a, a crooked line approach from Guilford. In fact, they've told me that they're straight line. They're still straight line. Well, not so technically. But I, what this we'll resolution would do. <laughs> it's a boat in that line. Right. <laughs> if you really look at it. Things, things can change. <laughs> Ten years ago, we yeah. were having the same conversation. Ten long years ago. Um, and here we are again. But the General Assembly has now changed the law to make this provision. <coughs> uh, and the bill was sponsored by uh, folks from all over the state. Somebody from Haywood County, Randolph County, and Iredale County were the three primary sponsors of the bill. So, so before that bill was passed, couldn't, couldn't the counties we request that the dollars. geodetic line be used anyways? I don't understand why. The, what, the, what's what, different what now? Changed? Mm -hmm. What changed about it was this, uh, Commissioner Byrd. The, uh, the previous law said the counties could agree and, pr and produce a bill for the General Assembly, which we did uh, two, maybe three times. The new law was changed that, that said that the county can ask the geodetic survey folks to assist us in defining and monumenting the location of uncertain or disputed boundary lines established in accordance with law, and that the geodetic survey may cause the boundary to be surveyed and mapped. After all of that's done, uh, they will submit the results to the requesting counties, and then the counties have um, a year to ratify the map. And if they don't ratify it, we've got the to accept survey the folks yeah. record. It. They they record. It. <coughs> and under this new law as amended, they're the ones that notify the property owners uh, of the new location of their property. And we went through this uh, several years ago. Bruce Walker. Well, this was gone through when I was campaigning because I remember coming to the uh, meetings and hearing all the discussion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, three, so that was like a long time. Three, just three years ago, a little, maybe three and a half years ago. Bruce and I had the pleasure of meeting the disgruntled citizens of Guilford County on several occasions. Uh, 
and the folks in Gibsonville, I believe you were at that meeting, Gibsonville, where, yeah. where people were very upset about the, the line. Well, the line has now been located in a, and Guilford adopted in December of 2007. That's been the line for 10 years in Guilford. That's what they go off of. And I believe our tax uh, administrator would agree that's what, that's what we've been using. So, so I have another question. If, and this probably isn't likely, but if we wanted as a board, and if Guilford County's board wanted to have the crooked line according to the procedures that were being worked out three and a half years ago, would that still be possible? It's not prohibited by any action. It's not prohibited by this statute. Well, Guilford County's not going to go along with that. Well, they? This, board, they? this board as it currently exists will not, but things change. The board before the current board had agreed to do. They get over and elect them all out. But all, all this does <laughs> is, is lay that line down based on the monuments that were located. Uh -huh. uh, when Guilford was carved out of orange in 1781, and they did find some markers. And using the magic of uh, they didn't find computers. the marker, but it's 25 miles due west of the Hillsborough Courthouse. That's and Roger Barnes was up here, and I've asked him many times, yeah. "Where is that marker?" They don't know. It's probably in somebody's <laughs> uh, collection. <laughs> probably, now, but we, they did find a north and south and pulled a string on. We had uh, we had one marker in the Randolph Guilford. I've seen that line. one too, and the gentleman told me what he did on that market. The, the chicken time. farmer <laughs> moved it. He actually moved it, believe it, it or not. It was laying in the field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But He's that survey now. was conducted by uh, Southern Mapping by old Mr. Stout, not young Mr. Stout. And well, I've got a copy of that in our files. Well, he mapped, he mapped a 26 mile line and put a marker every quarter mile. Wow. And this I resolution that we're looking at doing really tells it. It said, whereas over the past 168 years, there's been various agreements and arrangements made by and between Alamance County, Guilford County tax collectors, and it's resulted in a lot of uh, confusion over the situs of specific parcels. And that really did create a lot of the problems. Sometimes they'd go in developments and the tax administrators would shake hands and say, well, you take these two on this street and I got these over here. And, and it did create a lot of problems. Yeah. So I'm well, there are two competing issues in my mind over this matter. You, you got one issue um, that says, well, the line ought to be straight because it's nice and neat, mm -hmm. and it's maybe what was originally intended back hundreds of years ago. I don't ago, know that they was. knew what they were intending. But, uh, <laughs> but then, <laughs> and on the other hand, you have people who have bought property thinking they were in one county or the other. And the, the downside of that straight line, in my view, is that it just raises all kinds of um, implement, implementable issues, like who, who's going to provide the law enforcement, the fire, the EMS, where are they going to vote, what school are the kids going to go to, and and the, the taxing is the easy part. You, you can just tax no, proportionally. No, I don't think that's the easy part, is it? <laughs> well, you can, you can decide to tax yeah, if, you, if you're in 10% yeah. of Guilford County and 80% yeah. in yeah. Alamance yeah. County, you just tax you know, accordingly. Right. But, but it's these other issues that are, are kind of issues messy. that do make life yeah. tough yeah. for and, folks. Um, but. So, but on the other hand, by the, the competing issue for me is if something doesn't happen we we have a lot of people we, we that are do in limbo. we need to recognize this um, line i mean i had one constituent call me to say that um you know she's trying to refinance her property and she's got issues with i think guilford county is saying that she's delinquent on taxes because she's just been paying alamance county and, and i mean it's you know when you get into the escrow thing and with the mortgage <coughs> payments on for taxes and yeah and it's, Clyde's it's a real been involved mess. in some of that in oh, the yeah. past we've that had we've had double taxation that, which can't happen either the mortgage so. company tags them for both counties because yeah, the mortgage right, right. company in, yeah, there's that in mm -hmm. chicago can't figure it out either so yeah. they just send a tax bill for both so counties. some resolution is better than no resolution yes. for those reasons but uh, i'm not I'm, not, I'm okay with a crooked line. If you get far enough out, it looks just fine. It's just more strong. <laughs> it looks straight when you get out a couple of, well, I, you know, I got get out of space. Get out another yeah. space, it looks pretty straight. I wasn't going to try to go back on this, but I am now. <clears throat> I'm the only one up here, and I expect I'm the only one in the county management arena that went to the first meeting on this in Hillsborough back in 
1970. I think that was 1890, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that was your anniversary. <laughs> no, seriously. We went over to Hillsborough. We met at a restaurant. And I hadn't been on the board but just a short while. And Orange County <coughs> officials said, oh, we agree with the straight line. But they thought it was to the west of the S's and the Cane, Cane Creek. Creek. And I was just a layperson at that time on this issue. And I said, are you trying to tell me that Cane Creek moved? Well, basically that ended the debate right there. Because Cane Creek had moved. I don't think anybody has gone down there. Not, not, not in those essence. Yeah. But what took place over in Orange and Alamance was terrible. Mm -hmm. To zigzag that line the way they did and even took it around a cul-de-sac is a joke. Anybody in surveys, geodetic people will say it's a joke. Sounds like gerrymandering. It was legal, but now you talk about future problems. Assuming that we're around 100 years from now, just think what you're going to have over there, maybe. But nothing. It's going to be recorded. Well, I still say you'll have a problem. I can't see it. Okay. Well, you were involved in some of the developments, so uh, was on the geodetic. Uh, we were, and we yeah. were following what tax administrators I promised. Hear, I hear. <laughs> but once it's recorded, it seems like it's it is. It's settled. That's the right? thing. That's why we did that. If you if you look if you look at what. This is what bugged me about the whole process with Orange, and now it's kind of carrying over to this side with Guilford. And, and I know it's going to rub some feathers wrong, but we got no precedence out there much until I pointed out that Wake and Franklin talked it over, and a developer in that situation wanted to have the lines moved to accommodate his streets. Now, this is the capital, the county of the state capital. And it's in the stuff that Brian gave to us. They said, we're going to go with Geodetic. That's what the professional surveyors are saying. And you will pay where you lay your head. Now, as if that is some type of far out principle, it's used across the United where States. Where the master bedroom is. Where the master bedroom is, that's where you're going to pay your taxes. And then we pointed out Thomas built bus factory. The line goes through several of their buildings. I talked to both counties years ago, and I said, any prop? Nope. And I think we verified it again. We get what's there. We get what's ours, and they get what's theirs. I drove, drove up in the driveway of, of, of a parent that lived in Archdale. And I was trying to fill out the paperwork for the little girl, and I said, tell your mama to come out here, because I had to write in what county they lived in. Mama came out to the car, and I said, what county? They had our still address. She said, well, the house is in Gil uh, Randolph, or what, which are the two counties involved. Backyards in the other county. I said, you ever had any problem? No, not really. I said, they had you know, a building situation with the cars. You didn't have a better problem. And then we, I had it drawn up today. This is what's amazing. We act like this is the only county that's got this issue. This is across the United States. You don't move a county line like you do a school board line or a municipal line. You don't do it. You had a, uh, as big a left-wing person as, that I could find on the Orange County Board of Commissioners that said county lines are not important anymore. They're archaic. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. I was stunned that he believed it. But right here is a map. Got it printed up today. I drove a kid that lives... This is Forsyth Guilford Line, okay? And you go into their development, and hang a left. They even got a road in their development called Forsyth Drive. But the kids lived in Guilford, on to the left. And even they knew about the issue. They said, well, said, we're in Guilford, but that house over there, the county line runs through the garage. And I said, well, where do their kids go to school? Because they knew there were kids over there. And they said, well, said, they were given a choice. They could either go to Forsyth or go to Northwest. And they go to Northwest. That was for grandfathering or forever and ever? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, as long as they, now I don't know if oh, it was the house, as long as they owned the house or not, but it was definitely an agreement. Now, the biggest precedent out there, and again, I dug it up. Nobody talked about it until I brought it out. North and South Carolina states 
did a geodetic line survey. And they said, this is what we're going with. Both the legislatures went with it. They had people that lived in North Carolina. All of a sudden, they're in South Carolina. They had people in South Carolina that live in North Carolina now. You know, I got one thing to say about them geodetics. It's a shame they didn't have the satellites back in 1790. Because that. <laughs> that's, that's exactly all yeah. it is. And, and they could list to you how many houses went back and forth the whole night. And then the legislature, the legislatures, both of them, agreed to this process. And if that's good for two states, it ought to be good for a county. The only deal down in uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, was a fireworks store that could sell fireworks if they remained in one state <coughs> versus if they got moved to another and they were able to maintain their status so they could still sell fireworks. But uh, it's amazing to me that we think we can move a county line like we do a municipal line or a school board line. And I'm proud to say I'm the only one that has supported the Orange Alamance geodetic that didn't get done. And I think what's over there is a travesty. <laughs> Taking a county line around a coal sack. Now that just takes the cake. And, and and that we feel like we're the only county that needs to zigzag some lines, you know, when the whole pre all the presses out there are geodetic. And, uh, anyway, so, I'm sorry. I had to get on that topic again. <laughs> I th are you very passionate with it. But there are people within us. Are houses. you advocating <laughs> So you're advocating for the resolution that we accept yeah. the geodetic? Well, if it's geodetic. Uh, and that's yeah. what we're, yeah, before. I would like to know more about grandfathering, which I asked about, and uh, <coughs> schools, and I think you checked into all that. You spoke with, uh, we communicated with Dr. Harrison, and uh, what I asked was if the event that we adopt geodetic and that becomes a line we start using for uh, tax purposes as well as service purposes, residency when it comes to schools. If there was a child uh, attending Alamance Burnham School System at this time and the geodetic line puts them over in Guilford County, would uh, ABSS be willing to work with us to grandfather that child into Alamance Burnham School System so the geodetic line doesn't automatically move them over to Guilford County? Uh, Dr. Harrison indicated that uh, he would be supportive of that. That is a decision for the Board of Education, not for Dr. Harrison, but uh, he would support uh, that process and felt like the Board of Education would also. And it might be that we would tailor the agreement to be that uh, while the, the family's children are in school, this applies. If the home changes hands, though, the, it would revert to where uh, the child should, the new children should go to school uh, when they move there. So, uh, bottom line, they were very uh, willing to work with us to grandfather kids in uh, if we, if we, uh, if the county decides to go with geodetic and that results in children changing systems. Would that be put in our deeds as far as? Well, if it changed hands, it would. The deed would be recorded in the county yeah. where the property is located. Yes. Actually, a lot of them in Beaver Hills are recorded in both counties yes. because of that. Yeah. Yes. I have kind of a technical question, I guess, about the right, the way the statute is written. So it says in the, if you look at the statute 153A-15A, mm -hmm. um, it says upon reestablishing all or some portion of the county boundary, and if after the geodetic survey submits the results of the survey to the requesting counties, has that happened? Are we, have the things that are in the statute to trigger, because it jumped out at me um, that the survey plot will become conclusive as to the location of the boundary. So have the, the, the things in the statute that would trigger that survey plat being conclusive as to the location of the yes. boundary. Have those things happened? They've happened, but they happened 10 years ago. That's why we're having to go back to the geodetic survey and ask them to, to, to confirm it, confirm map it. it, and then both boards ratify it. So are and you saying that, in your opinion, that the, the changing of the wording of the statute, statute is um, prospective? Like, if the work was already done, it doesn't count, we have to do it over again? No, no, that, all it does is they, they have the preliminary map ready to go. Guilford's been using it. They right. adopted it in 2007. <clears throat> We're asking them to go back, prepare the final map so we can ratify it. Which requires actual surveying. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think they'll, they'll go back and look at their information, which they still have. I think Dennis is still working with uh, I guess I'm struggling anyway. to understand what other options we have other than doing, I mean, well, is there an option? Is there something else we can do? 
because I've received phone calls too. I got one today from somebody whose mom has been on the farm since the 1950s. Right. The house is in what is in Gil would be in Guilford County. The right. barn would be in Alamance County. So he's concerned that if somebody's hurt at the barn than right. a different county. And so that you're is, saying uh, that we, those it, kind we, of details could be worked we out. We already have interlocal agreements with EMS, Volunteer Fire and Sheriff's Office with BJ Barnes. Uh, and in 10 years, we haven't had a problem. Okay. Somebody calls, they're going to get served. Well, uh, I had a problem. Two I had a problem, and Chief Britt can testify to it. Beaver Hills, <laughs> when I had a break in, you come out and did the investigation. You said, Oh, I'm sorry. Even though we were technically supposed to be in Alamance, it so was we, an we, issue at that point. We've been time. double covering for 10 years. <coughs> yeah, we responded, but I think once we determined where the line it was, it had to be sent to Guilford mm -hmm. County. Emergency, yeah. You will get both. Possibly. Yeah. We will go if we're called, and then if we determine those things will work out after. Yeah. Okay. Just don't have a heart attack not knowing which county you're in, so you know who to call, right? <laughs> well, if you've got one of those. Yeah, you need to call no matter what happens. Call. Your cell phone will tell them where you are. Yeah. Uh, well, that was, what, what wasn't advice? working at one time. <laughs> I would suggest, and I think the Guilford Board's going to do this on Thursday. Or this, or not Thursday their next meeting uh, is going to adopt the same resolution you have before you because yeah. uh, they go for county attorney and I worked on it together <clears throat> and then we'll go down to Raleigh and we can work out the details of the school boards get those things uh, issues which we've done before and I think that Guilford and Alamance work yeah. work those out okay in the bill that will finalize it and then the map will be recorded I'll make the motion we accept okay. it Pathetic line. Oh, shucks. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll second that. <laughs> All in favor? All third. Uh, 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 thank you. Thank you, Tim's Thunder, away. <laughs> I wasn't jumping to do it. I wasn't <laughs> All right. Stepping up initiative. Mr. Bird, you I'll, got a little report? I'd be or? happy to kick this off. Um, Three weeks ago, we had a team from Alamance County visit San Antonio, Texas, Bayer County. It's spelled, doesn't look like Bayer, it looks like Bexar, B-E-X-A-R County. And uh, to visit their uh, jail diversion program, which we're referring to as Stepping Up, but they, they created theirs before the Stepping Up initiative was even thought about as a, as a nationwide initiative. But the, the, the that what, how they're keeping people with severe mental illness from being arrested and uh, incarcerated and connected to services and, and also avoid the hospital emergency room. So uh, we had a big team go down and it was a wonderful, wonderful trip. We learned a lot and we'd like to talk a little bit about it. Um, one thing I'll say is that uh, sometimes you never know what's possible until you see it. And, and that's what I came back, what we saw there kind of opened up uh, my view is about what's possible in Alamance County. Now, now, San Antonio is like the seventh largest city in the United States, so we're not going to have a program here like they have in San Antonio, but we could, picked up a lot of things that we can scale back that would be appropriate for Alamance County. So let me introduce the, uh, the people that uh, went on this trip. Uh, of course, the sheriff uh, went and um, Brian Haygood, our county manager, uh, myself, Tim Brett, our chief deputy sheriff, Pat Nadolsky, our district attorney, Susan Osborne, our director of DSS, Stacy Saunders, our health director, uh, Dr. Jim Ryan, he's here, I saw Jim, there he is, a uh, private psychiatrist and who's part of our leadership team, uh, great asset to our group. Uh, Rick Bruton, I saw Rick here from uh, uh, senior community executive with Cardinal Innovations Healthcare. Uh, Kirk Puckett from the sheriff's office. Where's Kirk? He was here. He, he was here. That. <laughs> Must have had a, got a call or something. Uh, Sarah Huffman from RHA. Uh, RHA is one of our leading mental health providers in the community. Buddy Whitesell from the county staff over uh, facilities, their maintenance director. Uh, Chloe Donahoe. Chloe is our Elon Alamance health partner, which is a postgraduate. She graduated from Elon University. Postgraduate fellow assigned to the uh, health department for the year and who's also helping us with stepping up. 
Uh, Linda Allison, there's Linda, who's uh, one of our co-coordinators uh, working under the Sheriff's Department to help keep all this energy going and doing all the logistics of uh, this initiative. Laverne Delaney is not here with us tonight, but she's the Chief Nursing Officer at Cone Health Alamance Regional Medical Center. She's also the Vice President of Patient Care Services there. And then Belinda Booker, who is with Cone Health Alamance Regional, she's the Assistant Director of the Psychiatric Unit or the Behavioral Health Unit. So we all went down and uh, um, learned a lot. And so um, we are going to first uh, hear from the Sheriff and, and your Deputy, Chief Deputy. First, let me say, uh, Commissioner's mental health crisis we're experiencing today uh, has been around a long time. I think the uh, government, I think society has turned our back on a lot of these people. That has caused us to have a lot of problems uh, for our citizens. As a law enforcement officer, 46 years, we've only ever had three choices as an officer in dealing with individuals with many, mentally health, mental health issues. One is to put these individuals in jail, which does no good to the individual or society. The second thing is either take them to a hospital emergency room where our officers will sit with them sometimes two and three days before they can find a bed because the state and federal government has basically turned their back on these people. The third is to go uh, Monday through Friday from nine to five to a crisis center, which is not always feasible. This is no longer acceptable in my opinion, for us in Alamance County. We have a chance to change history here in dealing with the mentally ill individuals. We have to confront this problem. It is costing society and our government hundreds of thousands of dollars every year, not only in Alamance County, but other places. We ask ourselves, why a San Antonio model? Well, we went out there and looked at this. And I'm telling you, I left there very excited and still very excited about what they were doing out there and how they were addressing these issues. And I could talk about it all night long because that's how exciting it was. But the one thing that, that got me was they were able to communicate with these people and stop many of these people from being... Uh, frequent flowers in, uh, flyers into the county jail over and over and over costing taxpayers money. They are saving over five million dollars a year by using their diversion center. Now certainly we're not that big and I know some of you are asking why Alamance County. I can tell you I'm very proud of Alamance County. We are the ideal for this project. And the reason is because our collaboration with the group that went out there, our commitment to this project, and we have the necessary elements and agencies involved that are needed to make this project totally successful. And I firmly believe that. This year in Alamance County, we had uh, over 446 calls that were coded mental health issues that we had to deal with. Many of those wound up in jail, costing the taxpayers, whereas if they had had the proper treatment and proper medication and follow-up, they would be productive citizens out here in society. So that's twofold. We, uh, in our screening of our inmates, we average 12 to 15 percent of our inmates that are screened to have mental health issues. And we're not able to screen them with a licensed social worker. Uh, that needs to be in that detention center to evaluate some of these people. Secondly, we have no other choice but bring them to the jail or the places I see it. Whereas if we had a diversion center, we could take them to that center, they would be evaluated there, and they would be put on a program that could help them succeed in society. Uh, our percentage, we, we, like I say, are about 48 inmates a day. If you take $67, and that's about the average cost just to feed the inmate and look after the inmate, not counting the medications, you're looking at $3,216 a day cost to the taxpayers of this county. 
you figure that times three hundred sixty-five dollars. That is a gigantic saving, and that money can be put back into our diversion center to help operate. Commissioners, I'm here to ask you to please allow us to do what we should have done a long time ago, and that's to address these mental health issues. We owe it to these people, and we can do it here in Imance County. And I'm going to turn it over to Chief Deputy Britt at this point. I got he got us warmed up now. Yeah. Come on, Chief Deputy. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm probably not quite as passionate. I won't, I won't take much time. Um, I've had the opportunity to speak to you before about this. So what we're really talking about is efficiencies. These monies we're already spending. The folks that we're looking at that would be divertible are not people that are hurting folks, not people out here that are committing serious crimes. Most of them are nuisance-type offenses. Uh, they're in crisis, so they act out. They're off their meds, no help. So they're out here doing – they're in public – doing a public nuisance, trespassing. And uh, just as we started to dive in and really look, I'll give you one quick case study. We had one uh, gentleman in our community. He has been incarcerated 26 times. All nuisance, nonviolent, get off his meds, go into Burlington, I need help, start acting out, somebody call the police. Limited options, so they take him to jail. He would spend about 30 days per time in our jail. This gentleman has spent almost 800 days in the Alamance County Jail. Oh Alamance County has spent $77,000 incarcerating this one man. You know, what his, you know what his problem was? Sick, needed some meds. So it's not about building another program. It's not about finding another bucket to throw a bunch of money in. It's about, we're already spending this money, as the sheriff said. It's about some efficiencies. It's about seeing if we can do something, find a different path. We're tying up our ambulance service. We're tying up our deputies. We know that folks that are in crisis require more supervision. We know that they are a higher liability, much more cost in our jail. So once they get in jail, they're requiring more supervision. Additional folks acting out, negative incidents. It just it aggravates the situation. So the goal here is to find a place to get some services and get them help. We're not dealing with them 25 more times. At the end of the day, I like to say it's the right thing to do. We've got people that are hurting, that need help. They don't belong in jail. And we have got folks in our county doing a life sentence 30 days at a time because they're sick. Thank you all. Thank you, Jim. So Stacy's going to talk about some yeah, of our specific I data. Both of those <laughs> <laughs> um, with numbers and things, so um, bear with me. Um, so the sheriff and chief deputy um, alluded to a lot of what I'm going to tell you. Um, and really, when we talked about the Stepping Up Initiative at first, um, we, we had a few sort of hypotheses um, that we thought about that potentially we had a really high number of individuals with mental health um, issues in the jail. We also hypothesized that housing mental health inmates in our jail was really costly. Um, we also thought that folks not going to detention were likely going to the ED, um, which was also associated with a lot of cost. Um, and local resources, including law enforcement and EMS, um, were being utilized and those those resources were being tapped in what we would consider a pretty inefficient use of those resources and taking folks off um, taking our EMS and our law enforcement off of their duty which was out in in our streets and doing public safety and um, sort of holding them up in hospitals um, and supervision of mental health folks with mental health issues and so next slide oh I have it thank you no you have it okay. thank you that'd be great and so um, in the beginning, what we knew, and so what I'm charged with, with telling you a little bit about is how, how did we know we had an issue and what was the magnitude and why did, we, why did we say this was the right thing for us? And so the sheriff did a great job of, um, sort of sharing with you that on average we think about 12% of the inmates in the Alamance County Detention Center are suffering from mental illness. We actually think that's grossly underestimated. Um, and one of the things that we really sort of th thought about was what type of screening tools are we using? And um, one, of our, one of our lead strategies is to really think about this, the screening tool that we use in the detention center to better um, identify folks because national trends show us that it could be somewhere 25 to 30% of your detention center population. Um, and at that time, the, all of the data you're seeing right now is sort of that, that starting data just to tell us um, what, is there a problem? Um, was done in 2016, and at that time it was about 43 inmates, uh, which we also thought was pretty low. Um, currently it's about 48, um, and 
in order to house those inmates, it was it is costing or was costing us at that time um, over a million dollars, one point two million dollars to do that um, in our jail system, and so that is about twelve percent of the jail budget. What else we knew um, is that about nine, we had about nine ED visits for mental illness per day on average um, from our hospital data. And we're still trying to gather with our hospital partners about what's that, what does that really cost when someone goes to the ED for mental health issues. In addition to that, we had two daily trips by law enforcement um, to the ED and two daily trips by EMS to the ED. Um, and each one of those, if you extrapolate that out, for the, e for the emergency room, that's about 3,300 on average visits per year. Um, and what we're finding is that when we actually look at the data a little bit deeper and see the different diagnoses codes, uh, whether it's primary, secondary, and those sort of things, that, that, that number is quite high. It's more than that 3,300. Um, and when we extrapolate the uh, trips that law enforcement take and EMS take daily, that's about 730 trips by each one of those agencies. And what that means is that for law enforcement in particular, they must stay with that person. Um, and so that can be a few hours or days. Or day, um, kind of a uh, that range is quite large. And so, next slide. So we, we knew by just that data, we, we've got an issue. We are utilizing resources in, um, in a way that they are not to be, are supposed to be utilized. So what better way could we be utilizing it? And so that's where you see sort of identifying stepping up and really looking at the goals of stepping up and saying, hey, this is, this is what we should be doing because um, this is a better way to do these services. And there are four ma major goals that are universal to all stepping up initiatives. And you'll see them there. Reduce the number of people booked in the jail with behavioral health disorders. Reduce the length of time uh, people with mental illness stay in the jail because we do know that so, some folks with mental illness are going to be detained in the, in the jail. Um, and increase connections to community-based services and support. So those wraparound services that getting treatment in the jail um, is really inefficient because once you're released, where do you, you go after that, right? Meds or whatever you um, need. <laughs> and so having sort of those wraparound services is really important. And then reduce the number of people returning to jail, which is the recidivism piece. Um, and you can see up there, the four, there are four domains of strategies, too, that we really focus on law enforcement, diversion, screening, and identification, the connection to the services, and community su supervision. Next slide. And so this is what we hope to get to, and we will get to, with our baseline data. So one of the things with stepping up is once you have your committed leadership, um, then it's about getting that baseline data and tracking that data. So this is a grid that we created that has those four main goals at the top which are the decrease the number, uh, de decrease the percentage booked, uh, shorten the length of stay, increase the services, and lower recidivism. And then what you see are what the measures that we can actually track, which will become our baseline data. And we're in the process of getting all of that data. Some of that exists out there um, already. Some of it is us trying to figure out how do we get that data, um, because that data doesn't exist. And so how do we share that data and create universal uh, types of sharing in order to get that data to the right folks to be able to track it. And so what you'll see, and I won't go through all of this, but um, there are key indicators that really tell us that we're meeting or exceeding in those goals, and then there are contributing indicators that help us also understand the magnitude of the problem and are we making a difference. So Stacey, if I could just add, when we're talking about uh, the complexity of getting this data, we're talking about data from multiple entities in our community, our partners, so the hospital, RHA, in addition to the county departments Correct. and other community partners. Correct. And so, um, like I said, this is a work in progress. Some of the data we have, some that we don't have yet. In the future, we'll be able to show you that baseline uh, data with some, um, you know, how we're tracking that. Um, and we're working towards systems that allow that data to be collected, like the universal screenings, the, um, the inventory of all of our resources and the mapping of those resources, which are really important and performing that quality improvement process throughout the way. And I think that's it for me. All right, thank you. And uh, so is it Rick? Who's next? Rick and Pat. Rick and, <laughs> Rick and Pat. Rick and Pat. <laughs> it's like Rick and Frack. <laughs> oh, that was a low one there, huh? <laughs> 
I'll go first. Um, so I'm just here to talk about what our trip meant going down there, what it means for Alamance County, what we came away with. Um, you know, I didn't know really what to expect when I got down there, but I can tell you after, after seeing what they do in San Antonio, I'm really excited. Most importantly, I am hopeful. When we went down there, and you've heard a lot of what stepping up is about, but I'm just going to tell you what I saw and, and how it affected me. There's no question that it will save money. And there's no question that it's the right thing to do because we are defined by what we do for those in most in need. I, we went down there and went to the diversion center, and it was really the cooperation amongst all these entities. Um, they work together. That is law enforcement, Department of Social Services, mental health providers, medical providers, the court system, the judges, and it just amazed me that you had this cooperation among these groups. So when you look at this diversion center, you literally have law enforcement officers who will bring someone that's mentally ill and they will bring them to that center. Not taking them to the jail, not taking them to the magistrate, not taking them to the ER, not taking them to the places that we do right now and where it ends up costing a whole bunch of money. And when they go there, they get treatment and they get help. And they don't, and they end up where it's not a problem for the judicial system, and it is a big money savings. So, two things: it's, it is, as, as Tim said, the right thing to do, um, because unfortunately, our mental health system, as it currently is, um, often fails those mentally ill that don't have financial resources, and they end up in our jails. And I can tell you that the jail is not equipped; it's, it's not a mental health center. Um, it is not a mental health center. And we are seeing these repeat, off repeat offenders that are going back and back and back again, and it's taxing on our system. So that's what I came away with. And again, I have hope after going there, and I really feel that we can do what they do there, not at the same level because it is a much bigger place, but we can work together, all the different entities, as we have with the Family Justice Center and other endeavors. Um, and I believe that we can be successful in this program, um, and it will save money and it will be helpful to those that are in most in need. Thank you. Thank you. But I want to say I appreciate the Sheriff and the Chief Deputy's passion on this issue. It's, it's rare to see law enforcement that, that engaged and involved, and it, and it makes a huge difference, and, um, especially in this, in this area. So thank you. Um, so what, what I thought, it's, as um, the DA has pointed out, it, it's a community, these are community issues, so they need community solutions. So we need to get the right people to the table, which we've done. We've got a great group. I'm proud to be a part of it, um, but I'm, I'm one piece of that puzzle, right? So we need to work together. And the simplicity of this place, they've had 15, 16 years to get to the point they're at, but you know, I walked in there and I was thinking, oh, it's gonna be this big, great thing. It's, here's this thing, you need this person. Here's this other thing, you need these people. They have to talk to each other. They call this other guy. And they, I mean, it's, it, once you get the right people in place, um, and it's not just about the jail, it's not just about the ED, right? It's about the community, it's about the people, and it's about giving options, law enforcement options, EMS options, the general public options. And I hope to move this, not just become a diversion center, but this is a, a true community space for people to begin to recover and start to break down some of the stigma, because I feel like that's always gonna be the underlying issue. There's a lot of people struggling every day with substance use disorder, mental health. Um, they're afraid or scared to seek treatment. Man, that's all I have. Thanks, Rick. Very good. Very good. good so, so we have some next steps. Uh, Brian, you wanted to talk about your part of the next step. Well, sure. You're, talking, yeah, you're part of the next step. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Bird. Uh, I accompanied this group down to San Antonio and uh, had opportunity to see uh, how they uh, are really serving their mental health folks very well. And uh, as everybody has talked about, one of the main parts of the trip was touring the, diver uh, the Diversion Center uh, in San Antonio. And, uh, you know, I had some uh, ideas of what a Diversion Center is, but I got a chance to see that. It's an alternate uh, location for law enforcement and EMS to take folks to other than jail. We're taking them to the emergency department to leave them there to languish for uh, weeks, uh, possibly. Um, so uh, these are nonviolent folks, too, that are, that are going to a building. Um, and 
from the county government's perspective, that's kind of where we uh, are looking at. What could we do from county government's perspective? Do we have uh, uh, some role to play here? Uh, so the diversion center is a building. It's uh, 24 hours a day. It's able to take custody of uh, uh, folks from law enforcement or from EMS. We currently, this service exists now through RHA, through Sarah's group, uh, over near Holly Hill Mall, and the county is funding that through our MOE money. Remember, uh, just recently, uh, we took back responsibility of of direct contracting with our MOE funds and we spend a significant amount of that money uh, partnering with RHA to provide this service in the community but we're only paying for it uh, for about half a day we're paying for it from around uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, they have to find places for folks to go by uh, 8 p.m. at night and just so five days a week and uh, that's correct only for five days a week so part of our goal is to try to find a place that this could uh, take uh, a building a place that this could take uh, place in as well as find uh, uh, ways to free up uh, some of our own money uh, to help to help pay for this because this these MOE funds remember these are funds that we're required to spend on mental health service so uh, we're already spending uh, our own money on this too and our hope would be if we relocate uh, the crisis center, the diversion center, to a county building, uh, we wouldn't. Uh, there would not be any rent to pay, possibly. So it might be able to take that MOE money and expand the uh, the service hours. So one of the uh, properties that we have talked about in county government as being a possible site uh, for a diversion center, if this was going to take place in the county building, is a former elderly services building over on Martin Street. That's uh, right behind the Ag Building. Uh, we have a this stepping up task force group has looked at a couple of our buildings and decided that if, if the county was going to host a diversion center in one of its own buildings, this would be the place to do it. It's the former uh, mental health building back uh, in the uh, uh, years ago, so it's already kind of identified with mental health services. Uh, the square footage is also adequate. It's a little over 11,000 square feet, and it sits on the link bus line, which is very important too. You've got to be able to provide uh, public transportation. Uh, we'll be able to drop folks off right at the front door. We do have couple of nonprofit tenants that are in there now but we hope to be able to work to uh, find uh, alternate space for those folks this building is uh, remember a couple years ago about two years ago we went through and letter graded all of our buildings so this one is one of our D buildings so we've already been working to try to relocate our nonprofits so what we'd like to be able to do is find some outside funding maybe through some grants to be able to upfit this building and and turn it into a possible diversion center and use some of the MOE savings and relocating here uh, to be able to fund its operation longer uh, more maybe more days per week or more hours per day um, anyway we feel like this is this is a good potential place as we're talking about next steps for uh, the stepping up program in Alamance County I want you to be aware that uh, this this could be uh, a place for this diversion center to happen so thank you very much Let me ask you something. yes sir uh, the diversion center do we pay those, those employees for the diversion center uh, currently the, with are they county employees uh, <coughs> currently the folks that are at RHA are not no they're not they I, they I, contract no I wouldn't service. see them being a county employees I think this would remain contracted okay. because these are very uh, specialized and highly trained right. people okay. dealing with mental health. We don't folks, want to be in. I don't no, think I, the county wants no, to be we in don't, mental I health. Definitely don't want to be. No, no uh, I think the uh, the future would be as we do now. We contract, contract this service. service uh, we would just provide the space for the contract service to happen. So. And, and the, what we found, like in San Antonio in particular, but in other communities across the country, mm -hmm. uh, the successful programs. The in, I mean, there's going to be some increase in funding to expand that service to a 24-hour service. Yeah. Uh, but that, that comes from savings from the jail, comes from savings of the hospital emergency department. So we'd be we've would be we had conversations with the hospital. Uh -huh. uh, there's a commitment there to help fund this, but we I don't guarantee have numbers. You it's going to cost the taxpayers money. Well, we're really thinking that it's going to save the taxpayers well, I hope money. It does. Oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I hope it does. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. It'll be the so first, we'll, it'll and we'll be have the, to demonstrate that. It will yeah. be the first thing that it saved the county money. It'll be the first. So it'll save, save the sheriff having deputies over there all day long waiting at the hospital. I, I've seen that many and, times. And I would say we, we also implement, you know, we've got a, this grant from the Department of Justice right now that we're using for training. Tra uh, crisis intervention training is a big part of the overall strategy. Of, yeah. We're already implementing that. Uh -huh. um, and from the governance piece, you know, um, we're, we've now, since uh, we, this board here uh, approved setting up the Justice Advisory Council, 
for, to oversee uh, and advise on not just the uh, Family Justice Center, but now stepping up too. So you got a lot of uh, people from law enforcement, you got the judicial system represented, uh, other folks. I'm serving as the commissioner representative on that group. In fact, Susan and I were elected the co chair of the uh, advisory council, and one month it'll meet on Family Justice Center matters, and the next month it'll meet on stepping up matters. And when it's on stepping up matters, I'll chair those meetings, and Susan will chair the meetings when it's uh, on Family Justice Center matters. Well, it looks like to me that Family Justice Center has got about 15 managers. I don't know. I don't think we need any more. Well, and it's, it's mostly the same people that are, yeah. are, are going. So we thought this was an efficient way. Yeah, that was going to, to save us it. money too. Uh, well, I, I don't know if it has. I think it has in the long run. run. We had a grand. So, so, I, wanted, I wanted Susan to finish it up. Kind of wrap, wrap sure, this up I'll, for us. I'll and, wrap it up yeah. um, that way. So, um, you know, you've heard while we're going down this path, you've heard that from the sheriff and Tim Britt and, and Pat. Pat, you inspired me tonight with your hope. That's um, it's a great thing. You, uh, San Antonio has 10 years of data on cost avoidance. I think mm -hmm. that's one of your concerns, yeah, and yeah. rightly so. Um, yeah. And they've, you know, they've tracked how they've kept folks out of the emergency room, how they've kept them out of the jail, um, and what that cost avoidance can, can, looks can like. Can I add one thing we yes, learned sir. is that they avoided building, that's a big city, they avoided building building a, a jail. thousand bed jail addition. By, by because of, three, because of this initiative. Yeah. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. Um, so I, I think our next steps um, to, are really about forming partnerships, and that's what we're doing now. So this is not a county initiative. This is a community, county yeah. government initiative. Yeah, it's right. a community initiative. We have partners, Cardinal, um, Cone Health. The county is facilitating and, and acting to form those partnerships, RHA. but this is RHA. This is not our, um, our issue. We're formulating plans, learning new strategies. I think the sheriff came back with several new strategies that he has in mind. And we're kind of mapping what we're doing here and what we need to do different. And then to your point, Commissioner Lashley, we are braiding, blending, and integrating um, funding and services. We're not talking about duplicating. I think, I think with some success at the Family Justice Center, the, the county expense is the one position we pay one position. The rest of it is co-located services that the building, as Brian said, the county is the infrastructure from the building. Mm -hmm. But we have, you know, one position as the Family Justice Center director. And so that's the coordinating, facilitating position. And it's a model nationwide. And we're, we're having some serious successes. And I feel like we're saving money and we're keeping folks safer in the long run. That's so that's right. So um, I think we're thinking of following on the successes of the Family Justice Center with this, with the Diversion Restoration Center of co-locating services, but not the county providing those services. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, cost avoidance and reinvesting are really the ways we're going at this with the strength of our partners of Cone Health, Cardinal, and RHA. So uh, we'll, our team is here. We'll be glad to answer any questions you have, but we appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Thanks, Susan. Okay. So what's our next step, I guess, is my question. Well, we are uh, trying to seek funding to, to okay. renovate the building. We've, we've, applied, we've actually grants. applied to uh, Cardinal. Maybe by the next meeting we'll have a big announcement or something. That maybe, Rick? <laughs> well, that was a question I was going to ask. When we renovated the uh, old social services building, did we do any work on this building? No. No. I can tell you, um, the ACTA board meets there. That building needs a lot of work, too. <laughs> I'm over there every month. And the uh, Alamance County Community Services Agency, I used to be on their board, that, that, that agency moved out right. to, uh, on, to Vaughn, a, a location on Vaughn Road. Right. Friendship Center is still located there. I mean, the, the building has some issues, it's going to take some money to yeah. renovate. But we did that with Family we Justice did that with family and that worked. Yes, and yeah, because that used to be the old DSS yes. building. Sure, yeah. Okay. So we'll wait to hear back from you on More the coming. Yeah, we'll, we'll be on the we, we wanted to make sure, we, well, first of all, we wanted to report on this trip that we, you know, spent some resources going down to San Antonio mm -hmm. to, to uh, make. 
uh, and we just kind of wanted to update you where things were with our stepping up. So we really don't have any action that no we action need to no. take it off tonight. So. May I say something that's possible? Yes, ma'am. I, I hate to interrupt. I know that's rude. May I stand up? You can. Uh, my name is Allison Fletcher, sir, and I am a client, a former client of Mobilisi's and a personal friend of Bob Bird's and also have worked with the, them on the task force. I have a diagnosis, sir. In fact, five. Uh, nobody's mentioned the fact that we are people. We are human beings that are daily trying to work on getting better. And I would like to ask for your mercy. Um, yes, some things cost money. Human hearts and homelessness. Right now, uh, I am working on being independent. I was on in group homes for 20 years. It's very hard to get out of the system and graduate. I've been on the front page, sirs, of t this newspaper twice as a poster girl for the system recovering and, get, oh, oh, and getting out of schizophrenia. One thing we haven't mentioned tonight is we can set up a system, but who are the people you're going to help and what are you going to do with them in the system? I can tell you one thing. We need counseling. I lost five people this year. Uh, one suicide of a peer support worker. My boyfriend died shortly after that in a restaurant downtown, uh, Boston Sandwich shop of a heart attack. My cousin shortly after that. I got no counseling. I had nowhere to go. Uh, what Mo is, I've worked with Mo. I've known her for many years. They, she is a personable person. When I needed help, I called that agency. She came out that night. I had called RHA, I had called other places. Nobody would come because I don't drive. They came. And immediately they applied with Cardinal to get me services. Within six weeks I had them. And right after that, my worker hooked me up with food supply. There didn't happen to be any food in my group home. so. We were having boxes of food delivered to our door. Then uh, my group homeowner decided that she didn't like me complaining about the fact that the stove didn't have working burners and there were mice droppings in, and so they asked me to leave. And right now, I, I want to go back to work. Are you going to help me? She's offering to provide, uh, you know, rebuild, uh, uh, expand peer support services. I've worked with Cardinal on their CFAC board and recommended w that they expand peer support. We've had two workers die this year, and nobody's filled in for them. Um, right now, I've actually had to call Terry Johnson one night personally and Pat Nadolsky at church and ask them for help because I've been threatened, harassed, and abused by a landlady just because I have a diagnosis. Do you think that's fair, sir? Would you like that if somebody did that to your mother? Okay. Of course not. No. Yeah. Would you help? Would you help and the, tonight decide with that, I mean, it's Christmas time. Last year, Melissa published in the New Times an entire article on signs of holiday depression. I didn't know I had it. That article helped. She is the only person in the community who has reached out to help personally people. I've actually gotten copies from her of that article. I'm sorry, I didn't bring it tonight. It helps a lot of people. I distributed it at a church health fair. Um, I'd like you guys, please, to reconsider uh, if, you know, that vote on Melissa's uh, uh, application and then start the process for her of working to get started in the community 
on what Pat is saying, uh, a coordination of um, referral agencies. I need a place to live All right, for Christmas. Thank, thank you very much for putting your input in. And we do realize there are needs in our community, and thank you for bringing that up. Okay. Um, okay. So tonight, though, we're not voting on this particular item of stepping up. Our next thing on our agenda is uh, our county manager with a strategic plan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Copy this information. So there's no action on this strategic plan tonight. This is simply uh, an update of where we are uh, in this process. Okay. There we go. So uh, in, tw in 2015, the Board of County Commissioners requested that the county begin a process of creating a county-wide strategic plan. I think this came about after the chamber retreat, uh, where a number of folks from county government and county board of commissioners went down and had a lot of municipalities and a lot of different <laughs> entities with a strategic plan, and the county did not uh, have anything uh, current. Uh, and so the board instructed the county to, to get busy putting together a strategic plan. One of the first steps uh, I'm going to take you back in time a little bit, just cover where we've been, where we are now, and uh, what you can expect. Uh, one of the first steps in the planning process was to host a visioning retreat uh, where uh, commissioners came and county department heads came together and talked about what a strategic plan would mean. Uh, we enlisted the help of the UNC School of Government. You see Lydia Altman there in the picture. So I think uh, a couple of you may remember that, uh, that process. And uh, in 2016, we really got busy with uh, engaging the community, talking with the public, meeting with them. We held uh, 17 public forums uh, all around the county. We had a number of county department heads that facilitated these meetings where the public could come in and kind of talk to us about what they expected out of county government for the future. Um, Planning department and county, many, uh, county administration uh, were uh, kind of in charge at this, uh, at this point in the process. And uh, basically, we met with the public and asked them three, three questions. What is one untapped or underappreciated asset of Alamance County? What are the best opportunities for the county? And in 30 years, what aspect of the county would you be glad you protected or encouraged today? So uh, we got all this input from county departments. We got all this input from the general public. Uh, and we, we worked with uh, the input that we collected as well as taking a look at the county's health assessment and laid a foundation for the vision and the mission statements uh, and our core values and these five pillars that you have in front of you. Uh, as you can see, our vision statement that we came away with, and all this, the information you have in front of you was adopted by the Board of Commissioners uh, at a meeting uh, in September of 2016. So our vision uh, statement that came out of the process was Alamance County is a cohesive community with a thriving economy that balances respect for our rural history with thoughtful growth and development. And our mission statement uh, was Alamance County effectively provides its citizens with high quality public services the tools for successful economic development, and a responsive, transparent government that supports the community as a preferred place to live, work, and play. From there, we really got into uh, looking at the community feedback, and we came up with five pillars that we thought our strategic plan should be uh, based primarily on. These five include uh, preserving agriculture, smart growth and development, world-class education, public health and safety, and government accountability and resource management. So they kind of strike at the heart of county government and uh, who we are and what we, what we do. So moving on to today, 2017, and what we're doing currently. Uh, so a lot of the groundwork that you have there in your hand, that's been finished. We, we formed a strategic plan committee to continue the strategic plan process because this is uh, not the end of it, obviously, not uh, coming up with pillars and, uh, and mission and vision. There's more to do. Uh, the committee is led by uh, the project analyst, Andrea Rollins, in the uh, county manager's office. And the uh, strategic plan committee consists of myself, uh, uh, Bruce and uh, Sherry, our assistant county managers, planning director, and Michelle Mills, uh, our uh, uh, public information officer. So uh, we've gotten together, decided that uh, we need to 
further define these pillars and come up with some end goals that are uh, based on these pillars and also uh, to meet with departments about how can departments go about furthering these goals. How can they use the, particularly the performance management program to further these, uh, uh, this strategic plan? So since July, our team has been meeting with department heads uh, to talk about all the community feedback we got and to get their input about how to move these pillars and these uh, goals forward. So, so uh, you can see as we started in July, we worked through preserving agriculture. Uh, August, we talked to uh, departments about smart growth and what kind of goals they might set uh, for smart growth. September, we've met with departments and talked about world-class education, another one of our pillars. We just recently met with department heads and talked about public health and safety, and we uh, have another meeting coming up next week to talk about accountability and resource management. And my goal is to have you a draft strategic plan in the month of January that you'll be able to look at and see how all this uh, comes together. So, so just to talk briefly about uh, uh, our pillars that we've covered uh, with our departments. Preserving agriculture uh, was the first meeting that we held uh, and we talked with the departments and came up with a couple of uh, end goals that we think are important to county government. These include strengthening and appreciation of our agricultural heritage and natural resources, supporting local farmers as they contribute to a healthy and stable community, and promoting an awareness of the benefits of farming to the non-agricultural community. So. Uh, we've taken our community feedback, met with departments, come up with these goals, and this will be what we implement uh, in our strategic plan. We've also, so yes, those three goals you just mentioned, there'll be like action steps under each of those? Yes, we will, we'll put together initiatives that specific initiatives departments are. will take on, and uh, again, the way we plan to implement them is through the performance management uh, uh, program. So there's, uh, the plan will include these goals and then uh, uh, indicate some initiatives that departments will take on also. So smart growth and development is another one of our pillars that we have uh, tackled back in August and we came up with another, a couple of uh, uh, goals that we think based on uh, discussions with department heads and looking at our community input. These include uh, preserving natural open spaces and significant environmental areas for the benefit of the community, promoting development and recognizing opportunities that will support a thriving economy and uh, encouraging community input for future growth and development decision making. So this was one of uh, our, our big ones that includes economic development and the possibility of uh, land uh, use uh, patterns and, and possible controls. Um, so this one, this one had a lot of uh, dialogue about it. So, uh, the next pillar that we have tackled with departments is world-class education. We met with our folks in September and the focus of this meeting was really to talk about departments. What can departments do about education in our community? Uh, and so we came up with, again, another couple of goals. Uh, one would be supporting, uh, departments uh, are going to work to support all residents in reaching their greatest potential for personal and professional success, uh, partnering with community organizations and schools for long-term positive impact, and supporting educational initiatives to underserved groups in all age groups, including adults, school age children, and preschoolers. County government touches a lot of folks uh, besides just uh, kids that are uh, ABSS or, or other school age. We touch uh, uh, young folks, older folks, and we feel like education is something that is lifelong. So we'll be working with departments to put together ways that uh, they, can, uh, they can further people's education in the county too. And uh, the last pillar that we have just recently uh, met with department heads and talked about is public health and safety. Uh, we only met a couple of weeks ago, so we don't, we, we're still going over the feedback from the departments. We haven't formulated any specific goals, but I can tell you that the preliminary discussions uh, with department heads uh, and looking at community feedback from our previous meetings, we, we really talked a lot about preparedness, county government uh, being uh, prepared, first response, wellness and safe and uh, safe and healthy environment so uh, we're working on what those goals will be um, uh, in the future and the final one that we have not yet tackled but we're, I think we're meeting next week is government accountability and resource management uh, and we'll be meeting with department heads and this is talking about uh, efficiencies and how departments can make sure they're being transparent and what data we can provide to the public and help them better understand uh, what county government does. So again, uh, my goal is to have the commissioners a 
draft strategic plan in the month of January, <coughs> give you some time to review it, give us feedback, and then in the spring bring you uh, a finalized version of the plan. So, um, so as we move forward, uh, uh, again, the strategic plan and its completion is one of uh, the performance management goals for the county manager's office. So uh, we are very uh, uh, dedicated to making sure that it is completed. Um, we'll be working to uh, create these initiatives and align our strategies uh, and, and put them into the strategic plan that we will give to you and in that same document explain to you how we will incorporate the implementation of the plan through uh, performance management. I think that's one thing that will make this a little different from uh, Destination 2020, which was a great plan uh, and uh, had a lot of needs and there was a lot of time and effort spent into it. but. Until you start assigning some responsibility and some, uh, yeah, it, it can just sit on the shelf. And we, we certainly don't want this to happen. So, um, idea tonight is really just to give uh, to give the board an update, what we're doing, where we are, that this is a, a live and uh, uh, living and working document that we'll be bringing to you soon. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. But uh, if not, there's no action needs. I appreciate the update. Yeah. Certainly. Thank you. Very good. That's very important. Any other comments on that? Yeah. All right. Well, now you do bring us an action item. So. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I have an item for the board to consider. Uh, what I'm requesting is the board give uh, give us permission to apply seventy-four thousand nine hundred ninety-two dollars and seventy-seven cents from uh, the Walmart tax deficiency payment to infrastructure debt uh, from the North Carolina Commerce Park. So uh, uh, you know, the, we incentivized the Walmart development out at the North Carolina Commerce Park. Uh, originally, Walmart had estimated or indicated they would invest uh, $85 million in a combination of real and personal property. At this point, Walmart has invested a little over $59 million at the North Carolina Commerce Park site. But the agreement that Walmart signed with the county and Mebane and the city of Graham indicates that they will pay uh, based on $85 million worth of investment. So, okay, you're talking about tax payment. Yes, tax. yes. So we've taxed them on $59 million, but the agreement indicates we will get a payment from them that will make up the difference of the, the two values between $85 million and $59 million. So that difference, our share, one-third uh, of that tax payment is uh, $74,992.77. Uh, so our agreement at the Commerce Park says uh, that all revenue from projects, all tax revenue from projects out of the Commerce Park will be split equally between the county, Mebane, and the city of Graham. And for the Walmart project only, just for the Walmart project, the county agreed to give all of its share, it's one third of the Walmart tax revenue, to the two cities to pay for our uh, debt. Well, we borrowed about $2 million from them, or we, we, we committed to a $2 million investment to do infrastructure to get the Walmart project in and to open up the Commerce Park. So what we've been doing is, uh, as tax dollars have come in from the Walmart project, we've been giving it back to the cities to pay back our debt that we owe. So the debt agreement doesn't specifically include this payment. It really only addresses tax dollars. Uh, it just doesn't address this money. But my recommendation to you is we should consider it uh, the same as we do the tax revenue. Now we should take this opportunity to give it to the two cities to pay down some of our debt. Um, so that's, that's my request is to use this $74,992 uh, toward uh, what we currently owe uh, for infrastructure debt at the Commerce Park. And in fact, I'd ask the board to consider uh, approving us to do this anytime it happens with the Walmart property. So if next year uh, we still give a tax sure. bill to Walmart and they're still not at the $85 million investment that they had agreed to and we get some level of tax deficiency payment, we would do the same thing. So I wouldn't have to, I wouldn't necessarily come back to you again about it. Uh, our current debt for uh, infrastructure out of the Commerce Park is $1,755,500 and $43 and 78 cents. Uh, the, if we apply this $74,000, the new debt, the new balance will be $1,680,551.01. So uh, I'll be happy to entertain any questions, but my recommendation what, what would be to. What kind of interest was on that? Uh, uh, there was no, no, there was interest, no interest at all. No. Again, so I think this would be. That's a, what our debt is to Graham and Mabin. Mabin yes, that's part of the water and sewer. Yeah. Yeah. So they're not, they're not charging us any interest, and uh, uh, I think 
I, I think it would be the right thing to do is to give them Just this go funding ahead and pay too. Them because yes. they're dependent on us. Doing and the quicker share. we pay down so this you debt. Make a motion on this. Uh, yes, yes, sir. I'll make that motion. A second. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Amy, any more discussion? Question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Brian. Thank you. All right. Any, I would uh, like to ask a question yeah, that's yeah. germane to this, but do we have a system <coughs> that goes back and looks at what everybody said they were going to do employee-wise, uh, equipment-wise, to see if they've met, just like Walmart? Yes. Yes, anytime. If, uh, so if we do an incentive agreement and uh, a company uh, says, okay, we're ready to receive our payment, uh, we do have a process internally where we verify <laughs> that they have made the taxable investment. Uh, we work with Jeremy's group to make sure that that has happened. Uh, we also work with uh, uh, the state of North Carolina to verify the jobs. We get all that verified uh, before we send them any funding. And if they have uh, fallen short in some fashion, the contracts are tailored in such a way that we prorate the incentive so they won't get all the money that they that the agreement was depending on uh, you know if they've fallen short of the, uh, whatever they said they would do. But yes, we do have a process. You feel like we've gone back as far, I know you just, really got the seat in the way but you feel like we've gone back as far as we need to go to look well uh, I would say you know we've applied the process to the ones that have come in since I've been in the seat and I know that they were doing the same thing before so yeah. we haven't uh, anytime a company applies for the incentive payment we're checking on it uh, we're checking to see if they've met all the, the requirements so um, I think that uh, it's been uh, the process works pretty well I think uh, we've spent a lot of time over the past couple of months meeting with, uh, it's a team effort here. It's county manager's office, tax office, county attorney's office, finance, and we all get together and review these agreements. And we have a whole process that every, it goes through a checklist with each department. Everyone signs off and says, uh, this company has made its taxable investment. County manager's office signs off and says, we have verified the job. So in, before the check is sent, uh, it's a pretty thorough review. We appreciate what you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is really a team good. effort, and uh, it, it, it takes everybody to make sure it works properly. So it's uh, yeah. thanks to lots I of I think folks. that's something we learned on one or two things where we didn't have the clawback thing yes. set in place, and I think it works much better. So, all right. Uh, any other things you need to talk about? I have nothing else. Okay. Commissioner, comments? Um, I have something to um, tell the board about. I attended last uh, Wednesday, November 15th. I represented the county at the Jordan Lake One Water Association, which is a group of counties in the watershed jurisdiction for the, um, for the Jordan Lake watershed. And I didn't know what, what I was walking into, what it was going to be like. Uh, there was no discussion about the letter that we received from the Jordan Lake people about our compliance with the Jordan Lake rules. It wasn't about that at all. It was about forming a, a collaborative group, I guess, of counties to figure out how to protect the watershed. So I went in there thinking two things, kind of sort of as an Alamance County person. Um, this lake was not built to be a water source, and do these people know that? And two, are we going to get stuck with some kind of bill for cleaning up a lake that was never meant to be a water source to begin with? What, what is Alamance County going to get stuck with here on the hook for? Well, I, was, I left that meeting. I was delighted. I was thrilled because that was not their attitude. And there was um, really a lot of great information and um, movement forward in the relationships between the different entities in the watershed. So what did I find out? They've been, the scientists have been studying from, I think from UNC, uh, yeah, from UNC Marine Sciences, has been studying the lake. And they acknowledge that Jordan Lake is weird and that the primary water source is the Hall River and it comes into the lake from down by the dam. Most lakes, the primary water source comes from the furthest part of the lake and flushes out the, the bad stuff out of the lake. That doesn't happen with Jordan Lake. They have weird circulation patterns in there. So the science confirms what we already pretty much could look at the map and tell, that um, any problems with the water flow are caused by the design of the lake itself, the inherent design. And then the scientists also let us know there's two kinds of 
pollution, he didn't use that word, I will, uh, pollution that comes into the lake. There's nutrients and there's sediment. The nutrients that come into Jordan Lake, by and large, come from the Chapel Hill, Raleigh, Durham area. They come from the northeastern part of the lake. And they measured the nutrients coming in and they showed that in their data. Um, the vast majority of the sediment that comes in comes from the Hall River. And they had a chart that showed that when the Hall River floods, it's got a lot of sediment in it. I don't think anybody who's lived in Alamance County any period of time is surprised by that. If you ride over the bridge on Graham Hopefield Road by Copeland Fabrics, when the river's high, it's a muddy mess. Yep. And all that stuff washes down to the Jordan Le River, I mean to the Jordan Lake. So, and deposits there by the dam. Um, the problem with sedimentation is that it does breed nutrients over time. That as the sediment decomposes at the bottom of the lake, there's nutrients produced. But that's the way the Hall River is. So there's an acknowledgement that there's nothing that Alamance County is inherently doing that's going to mess up Jordan Lake. As the, the mayor from Chapel Hill was there, and she said, essentially, the patient is DOA to start with. Jordan Lake is DOA and is how we revive this thing so somebody can get some um, potable water out of it. So it was refreshing and soothing to hear that uh, these people in charge of the lake acknowledge that the lake has inherent problems. Um, the other thing that was so interesting to me is that, okay, there used to be this idea that people upstream from the lake are polluting the lake they need to absorb the costs of cutting back on the pollution and then everybody, everything will be fine. Well, that's not really worked out so well for Durham and Raleigh. And so they are embracing this idea where they will pay to keep the lake clean. And the way that they will do that is by one thing that they said is they will charge a volume, Raleigh is charging a volume fee to his customers to fund local land trust work. Um, that mean, and they said that that's generating $3 million a year. They will buy conservation easements, like we have farmland preservation easements that, that we fund through the county and get matching from, funds from the state. They will consider funding conservation easements. The, um, one of the commissioners from Wake County was at this meeting, and he said that they had purchased outright 1,000 acres in Johnston County to protect um, one of their other watersheds because they're in a mess. They got Falls Lake um, and other watersheds that they have to fool around with. So they bought a thousand acres <clears throat> and they're um, not going to do anything with it. It's just to keep it in trees and use for passive recreation. So I said to these people, I said, are you telling me that y'all have a revenue stream where we possibly could have conservation easements on farms and properties in Alamance County, and Durham and Raleigh are going to pay for it. And they said, yes. That's where we need to tap in. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm coming back to this meeting next time. Um, so I wanted to tell everybody about that. that was, uh, they said that um, Raleigh and Durham have put money into land conservation for water quality to the tune, besides this $3 million, of another $6 million. And to put that in perspective, our farmland preservation in our budget, we budgeted $50,000. The state of North Carolina, in its biennial budget, budgeted $2 million. So we're talking about a lot of money. We are. Possibly coming from the people who need the water. And they need it bad, because they are building like gangbusters over there in Chatham County. Are you kidding me? So. Um, I thought that was really great news, and I was excited to be able to share it. Libby, did you have any? Libby, did you were you able to attend the the technical meeting the next day? I hate to put you on the spot. I was taking the AICP exam that day. So oh, okay. Not, yeah, that was kind of something that popped up. I think it's it's important if you don't mind me just jumping in a little bit that um, when we start talking about these conservation programs, that this is our opportunity to guide where where we want those things to go. So it's important for us to take a step back and instead of just letting them tell us where they want to buy stuff, you know, that, that we, we should go take forward a step back and take a look as a community yes. at what it is that we want to do. Absolutely. And this may be a, something that we could think about as you're pursuing the um, strategic plan 
maybe something that we can think about incorporating into that, some kind of um, conservation easements or water quality stuff. Like that, and Sherry was there. Sherry, did I leave anything out? No, I think, no. And I, and I saw our Haw River keeper over here, his eyes perk and light, light, lighten up when we talked about that. So I'm sure there are some potentials out there, right, Brian? Oh, it was really great. It was all, it made up for the fact that they were moving a manufactured home on I-40 between eight and nine o'clock in the morning between Chapel Hill and Durham. That was a very upsetting, unhappy time for me. But then I got over it. Good, good. <laughs> Well, I'd like to report that uh, last week I attended the um, Chamber of Commerce's uh, Leadership Leaders Retreat mm -hmm. down in Riceville Beach, and um, Amy was able to attend for part of it, only part because she was at the uh, of the meetings you just described. Uh, but it was a very interesting and worthwhile uh, time, I thought. We had uh, some key speakers on, one, one was a futurist, and uh, one uh, dealt with uh, economic planning. We had several um, panel discussions, and I was asked to be on one of those, and that one was on economic development, and that included uh, David Cheek, the Mebane City Manager, Davis Montgomery, who's on the Elon um, Board of Aldermen, Frankie Manus, the uh, manager of the City of Graham, Peter Bishop, who's the economic developer of um, the City of Burlington, and, and myself. I thought it was a good discussion. Uh, we also had um, uh, panel discussions uh, around uh, demographics and the, and the changing of demographics in Alamance County, one on entrepreneurial leadership. And uh, we had a couple of uh, entrepreneurial um, speakers as well. One of them included, um, his name is um, Bruce Nelson, who uh, is, he and his daughter own uh, Reverence Farms and Reverence Cafe. Remember when we did the Sachs, tour? Yeah. Of yeah. 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 Sachs, yeah. So he, he He's the former uh, chairman and CEO of Office Depot, so he brings this mm -hmm. uh, national, international corporate uh, mentality uh, to the mix. But uh, it was all very worthwhile, I thought. I learned a lot. Very good. Yeah. I don't have anything to say. Not, nothing to say. No. Tim. I made a few words. Everybody's happy. Okay. okay. All right. With no more comments, I will call this meeting adjourned. Good job. Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Meetings of the Commissioner's Board occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. Typically, the first meeting of the month is at 9 a.m. and the second meeting of the month is at 7 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting is broadcast on Time Warner's public access channel on the second.